And now let's talk about the flight of migrants from the big cities in India to their homes. Ever since the lockdown was imposed in India in the last week of March, we have been receiving reports of a mass exodus of migrants. A few days after the lockdown was imposed, we saw horrific pictures from the bus depot in Delhi where migrants were packed together trying to find a way home. We also saw pictures from the road across the country as without food or water, they tried to somehow make their way to a place which they could call their own. However, this was not just a one-off reaction to the announcement of a lockdown. This flight of migrants has continued. People have died on the way. People have been struggling with hunger and starvation. And the attitude of most of the state governments and definitely the central government has been one of apathy. There's hardly been any facilities provided. And what is worse, when finally trains were announced for them, these trains were provided with no amenities at all. There was no food, there was no water, the bathrooms were in a horrible condition, and many of the trains even got lost. The migrants truly feel that they have been completely left to their own ways. We talked to Bhasha Singh, who's been traveling through Delhi and Uttar Pradesh, talking to migrants, talking about their situation, talking about what they expected from the government and what they finally got. Here's what she had to say. Thank you so much, Bhasha, for joining us. So you've been traveling in Uttar Pradesh for the past couple of days. You've talked to a lot of the migrants who are continuing to leave, live, they leave the big cities to their homes where they hope that they'll be able to survive. You've also talked to migrants who have traveled by train. So could you tell us what is the overwhelming feeling among the people who are leaving the big cities? Basically, it's very disheartening. And uh, it was across from Delhi to the Lucknow or to the rest of the places, Aligarh, everywhere. Just in one line, they were saying that they, there is no government. The government has left us. Uh, in Hindi, they were saying that we have left that means that uh, they have uh, been offered by uh, the government. And uh, the second thing, which was very painful, that they were crying and they were telling that they are workers. They uh, went to uh, have a better life. They are not beggars. And they were forced to leave uh, the capital, either it's Delhi or it's Surat or it's Bangalore, everywhere, because... Uh, uh, they were treated as a beggars. There was no respect for them. And the uh, very important point they were making that they waited for the government. It is not like this that uh, the day uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi announced the lockdown, immediately they started moving back to their homes. Uh, it took 50 days, 40 days, 45 days, 55 days, and still they are walking. So they said that they believe that something will be done for them. And when they started feeling that these cities don't belong to them, they don't have ration cards, even those who have uh, ration cards, uh, they were not getting it. And uh, the most uh, uh, horrible thing about the kids, everyone was uh, traveling with their small children. And they were saying that the government is just offering some rice, some dal, but they are not thinking about the kids, how, how they are going to feed them. And uh, to all of them, uh, their fear of dying with the starvation, uh, dying from the hunger, was the biggest challenge for them. They said that we will not die from the corona, I don't know. Uh, but before that, we will die from the hunger and the deaths have started. And those who were traveling with the trains, uh, they said that we spent so much money. We waited for the government. And when they started... Uh, many In many cases, they were saying that initially we started walking. Then the uh, police stopped them and then they asked them to go back and there will be trains. So there were many cases where they went back, uh, just uh, believing in the promise of the government that the trains will be there and some facilities will be there. And the narration uh, of uh, those people who traveled in the trains, if you just hear, you will not believe that India is in 2020 where they are saying that toilets were horrible, there was no water and there was no food. Uh, they traveled for more than 20 hours without any basic facility. And they said that we survived, it's a miracle. Otherwise the whole system uh, was as if they were waiting that we should die. And uh, one uh, lady said that basically it's a planning uh, by, the, uh, by the people in the park. Uh, to kill us. They don't want to see us. So 
uh, those were the uh, very heartbreaking narrations which were coming out and uh, they are entirely hopeless the whole democratic setup and the uh, government has made them that nobody is there only they they there is some hope that they will go back to their uh, village and they will get some support when i ask them that uh, there also you will have to face a quarantine for 14 days they are saying that they will be kept so they will say they are saying that okay we have survived so long we survived for the 50 days and even if we die in the quarantine it will be near our villages so at least somebody will be there to do the last rites if you die in the city who is there nobody uh, so far has uh, come out to so these are a uh, different kind of uh, reactions and responses uh, which was overwhelmed everywhere it was uh, you can't name that uh, you we can't measure the degree of their pain right and uh, could you talk a bit about the situation especially of those migrants who are traveling uh, who are traveling by road or who are walking so what is the, yeah. were there any kind of facilities at all how did they manage in this summer heat how do, how, hmm. how, how could you talk a bit about how they were traveling yeah so you see that now uh, all the roads are highways there are flyovers so and there's not a single tree on the highways so it's so torturous for them to travel uh, on the highways and there's no other way and uh, so they opted to walk in the night so generally they are walking throughout the night and whenever in the day they get some kind of a shade they are lying down there and in many places they started walking and then it was very difficult police was beating them then they collected then they had uh, some kind of money and i have seen many flooded in autos in small uh, trucks they managed they uh, promised that whenever they reach to their uh, villages they will be paying uh, the money uh, so that's how they, it is going on because it's uh, we can't say in the daylight if you see you will not find them in the walking because it's almost impossible for them to walk but it's still in small uh, groups and they are not now walking on the highways because they know that the police only one work the indian state is doing either it's uh, yogi government or the delhi government uh, delhi police they don't want to see them on the roads they want to avoid that they, they should not become visible they should not become a news so they themselves will tell that you go down don't opt for the main road you go by the lanes and people are opting for that so uh, a, a distance of 500 kilometers for a migrant worker has become a distance of 600 or 700 kilometers so uh, first thing that the indian state is just visible in form of police which is beating them which is uh, taking a bribe also i have uh, seen uh, from the uh, truck drivers who are carrying the migrant workers and many truck drivers uh, the migrant workers were also saying that they 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 came as a god they helped them Uh, uh, though uh, they were beaten severely in uh, up the police is beating uh, the truck drivers the auto drivers very mercilessly but still uh, those truck drivers when i had a word with them they were not ready to talk on the camera because they were so afraid but they uh, said that uh, i can't see them dying on the road so i thought that okay if i can carry you to the 50 kilometers i am able to carry you to the 100 kilometers then uh, i will uh, help you like that and from delhi and other places also this is one thing and the other uh, phenomena which is very strange that you will find uh, multiple private bus operators who are charging Uh, i had a word with a few uh, migrant workers who are staying in uh, delhi in mayur vihar area they hired a uh, bus uh, for 1 lakh 30000 30 of them uh, asked the money uh, taken uh, money on the loan somehow they managed and uh, then they traveled uh, they hired that uh, bus and they, they were going to the uh, bihar okay so the very uh, this is a very strange uh, situation the government knows that the private buses are going definitely the, those buses many of them i had a word with the operators they said that we are getting the e passes so my question is that when the private buses are operating why the hell the government buses 
are not operating, not uh, taking the migrants to uh, their homes. Okay. So you will find that they are uh, going by uh, cycles. A lot of migrant workers are going by cycles. We had just one story of the Jyoti no. who traveled. Uh, she uh, cycled from uh, national Bihar. capital Gurgaon to uh, Bihar. And you will find that there are hundreds, hundreds of them going in groups. They are uh, cycling in the night and everyone has taken loan, either second hand bicycle like the Jyoti or many other, which footage NewsClick has also shown uh, when I covered them. So you will find that everyone, it's almost they are desperate that they want to go back. So who, uh, if they are staying in group in the slums or in the bastis, then uh, they are uh, hiring private buses and huge number of private buses throughout the highways flooded with the migrant workers with no food and with no water. And uh, the uh, best part is that the villagers which are staying a little at a little distance from the highways, they saw for one or two days that these are going and it's in a very terrible condition. They themselves organize for the langars. They are making puris, parathas, uh, even providing milk to the children, uh, kids. So uh, that shows that uh, finally those who are surviving is because of these Indian citizens who came for the help when the right. Indian state is completely out of the picture. Right. They just left because they could have made. On the way, they have, the, they have made the shelters for the police. Hmm. Police is staying in the shelters. That is covered. There's a water. But the migrant worker can't go there. They are not offering them anything. So this uh, is the condition till now, which right. I find. Right. And uh, what are many of these workers thinking about the future? As in, do they think that at some point they will be able to go back? Or do they fear that it's going to be staying at home for the next couple of months? I think uh, right now they are thinking that they will manage somehow because they are very horrified with their experience in the cities. Yes. Uh, everyone is saying that there was no help in the cities. They would have died. And uh, uh, what is the biggest irony is that they are saying that we have been working for the city. Right. But when we were in the crisis, the city has not come. And they are saying that from last 50 days, we have been offered only the um, uh, rice and the dal. Nothing else has been given us to eat. So they are saying that how we can survive like this. The Indian state has not started thinking anything. Mm -hmm. And they are saying that you are saying that we should go back or we should stay. But there is no hope because all the, uh, and everybody was working in an unorganized sector, majority of them. They are saying that industries are shut and their owners are asking them to go back. And the owners are continuously saying that we are not sure when they can come back. Yeah. So you will find that they waited for Indian state, for the businessmen to respond for this crisis, to come to save them at least 40 days or 50 days. That's a huge long period exactly. for them. And when they they were completely out, there was nothing. And they are saying that uh, they, they don't have any hope now that uh, the cities or their, the industries which uh, where they were working, they are going to call them back. And uh, very interestingly, they said that now uh, Yogi Ji made a very strange comment. They have become our boss. So uh, who, uh, which industry will ask uh, Yogi Ji to give us, Yogi uh, means uh, the Uttar Pradesh Chief Minister, Yogi Adityanath, whose uh, recent uh, statement has come that the rest of the states have to take the nod of the uh, UP government before they hire their labors. Right. So they were saying that, uh, that will make our movement much more complicated, even if we want to go. Right. So right now there is no hope for them. And I think they are thinking that somehow they will adjust into the structure of the ruler economy. Somehow they will be doing something. And uh, for next uh, six months, at least, I think unless and until something happens in there and uh, the economy revives, because it all depends on how the economy is going to revive. Excellent. And they are very particular about it. They are saying that at least the Indian state should have given them some cash. Hmm. They are saying that how the uh, everybody is saying that work from home. But how we can work from home? Who is going to pay us? Right. Our owner is... And many came honestly. 
that our owner is also not so rich that he can uh, offer us uh, some kind of a help. So, uh, and in Jandhan account also, only the 500 uh, bugs have gone. And that too, their account generally is at the uh, ruler area where they stay. There they have opened the Jandhan account. So, uh, according to them, from uh, next uh, six to uh, seven months, uh, they are not ready to come back because uh, this experience of uh, Indian cities has been very horrifying for them. And especially those who are coming from the Surat, if you just hear them, they will say that how they have uh, been curtailed, they have been uh, lati charged, they have been, uh, the uh, Gujarat uh, state government did everything to stop them from going back. Right. So they are saying that uh, they have made us criminal. So uh, how the Indian labor has been criminalized, has been made as uh, the, uh, to the beggars. So two extremes this lockdown has shown uh, to us, mm -hmm. that we treat Indian labor as a beggar, and secondly, we have criminalized them the way we have criminalized initially the Corona COVID patient. Right. So same treatment we have done to the uh, Indian uh, workers, workers, the working class of India. Thank you so much, Basha, for talking to us. In our next segment, we look at what happens to a locality after an encounter. The Nawakadal area of Srinagar on May 19th saw an encounter between the CRPF and the JNK police on the one side and two Hizbul Bujahati militants. The militants were killed. But what was also destroyed on that day were the houses and the livelihoods of a number of people. Take a look at this ground report from Newsclip. देखो जिंदगी पर की कमाई है पुरखों की ये कमाई है उसमें लगी हुई है ये तो करोड़ों करोड़ों का नुकसान है ये 10 20 लाख रुपए का नुकसान नहीं है करोड़ों का नुकसान है ये तो जर सारा तबाह हो गया बीस पंद्रह मकान इधर गवर्नमेंट की तरफ से कोई मदद नहीं अभी कुछ मदद नहीं है गवर्नमेंट की तरफ से वो तो अब मिट्टी में मिल गए अब तो तकरीबन अगर इसको बेचेंगे तो दस बीस हजार भी कोई नहीं देगा no, 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 हमें उजाड़ ही दिया, उजाड़ ही दिया, क्या इनसे क्या तवा कर? हाँ 
हाँ मेरे घर में दो लाख रुपया था कैश था बीवी का जहेज था वो जायदाद होता है इनकी वो रौनक होती है वो भी ख़त्म हो गया नए से बनाना है सब कुछ बनाना है जो हमने पहना था रात को उन्हीं में हम निकले बस वही बच गया बाकी कुछ नहीं तो कितना नुकसान हुआ होगा अब क्या मेरे मेरे दो बेटिया है उनके लिए मैंने सामान लाया था अपना सामान था सारा कुछ जल गया खाने पीने के सामान पहनने का सामान बाकी जो था सामान पता है आजकल बेटियों को किस तरह के सामान होते हैं सोना कपड़ा सब कुछ जल गया सब कुछ राख हो गया That's all we have in this episode of Let's Talk. We'll be back tomorrow with the latest news of the day. Until then, keep watching News Click.